This is a U.S. China working group. And the Congressman's with me and now. Sir, you hail from the, one of the most beautiful parts of the United States, up in the top left, as we might uh, put it, and really at the top left uh, with, the, with the border from Canada. But it is absolutely glorious. And if we look at this TikTok debate, um, I guess, how do you restrict or the security threat without throwing the baby out with the bathwater? Well, I do think that um, the relationship between the U.S. and China needs to have some nuance to it, and the administration is right to ask for some flexibility uh, with this uh, with this legislation, because ultimately, dealing with TikTok is like is dealing with China. It is a, a diplomatic relationship where you need the levers to be able to turn on and to turn off in order to shape behavior, whatever behavior that we might want uh, might want to try to shape. Uh, as well as to use that leverage uh, in order to um, get a stronger position and stronger advantage for the U.S. So I, I think, you know, honestly, I think Congress historically has taken um, a, a harder line uh, on China. Uh, I think that's a good thing, but I do think still the relationship needs some nuance because uh, two largest economies in the world, two largest uh, emitters in the world, two great two very large countries investing in technology. We're both going to be around a while and there have to be avenues for uh, diplomacy and discussion while we're in the strategic competition with China. Yeah, see, that's the, that's the nub of it, Congressman, the strategic competition with China. Um, and we see it play out First of all, of course, with Taiwan, uh, there may be a d a deliberate military ambiguity there, but it's hotting up for the United States as well. And you see it in Ukraine with the possibility of China offering lethal support to Russia. Wherever we look on this issue, the U.S. is inexorably moving towards, as you saw the other day, uh, the conflict issues. Well, I, I know what the uh, uh, foreign minister, uh, the new Chinese foreign minister, said about uh, conflict uh, with the United States, uh, U.S. conflict with China um, as well. But I think uh, diplomacy is, you know, the art of trying to avoid avoid conflict, trying to manage a relationship. Uh, and um, from our from our side of things, I think the U.S. needs to show, like in Ukraine, what the costs of supporting mm -hmm. Russia with military or lethal aid would be. Um, it would be supporting a country that uh, does not respect sovereignty. That's counter to Chinese positions. It is uh, counter to the Chinese position of an independent foreign right. policy. Uh, we need to show them that. So we need to show, um, I think we have opportunities to show the Chinese government what the costs of actions are. And that is part of why the administration needs nuance, um, needs uh, some ability to show nuance while also being firm about what our values and positions are in the U.S. The, uh, the fascinating part, of course, is nuance is the last thing, say, for example, President Trump, former President Trump used in his relationship with um, China. And there is a genuine debate over whether, I mean, you're, you're on the nuance side, Congressman, but there's a genuine debate that says the only thing the Chinese will respect is a firm red line. Uh, the U.S. is very firm on um, a lot of issues with regards to China. It, it's a matter of uh, picking and choosing which, which ones you're going to be firm on. We are very firm on uh, human rights violations. Um, in China. Uh, we're taking action in Congress to support the previous president and this president. Mm -hmm. We're very firm on this TikTok issue. We're actually very firm on technology and the dangers that that uh, Chinese-based technology poses to the users of that technology, especially, especially as uh, the senator mentioned uh, in the testimony and his questions about the data, the data vacuuming that takes place and that data then becoming the property, not of a company in China, but of the Chinese right. government so and the and the people, uh, People's Liberation Army. That's concerned, and we need to be very strong and firm and united here in the United States on, this, on those issues while understanding that the two very large countries living in the world uh, at the same time need to have avenues in order to rub off some very, very rough um, edges, sand off some very rough edges in the relationship.
Um, final question. The, I can't believe, I mean, we're at that point. We're still a long way from the date of election of 2024. But let's face it, it, it uh, we're, we're, we're well and true. The horse race is on, sir. So would you support the president if he does decide, as it seems likely, that he's going to go for a second term? Or is he too old? Uh, I, if the president is running for uh, re-election, I'll be supporting President Biden. I think the record uh, shows when you look at the work we did to pass a bipartisan infrastructure law, a once in a generation opportunity to invest in the competitive advantage of the United States, the, the Chips and Science Act, which is bringing manufacturing jobs back to the U.S. and again, investing right. in the competitive advantage of the United States, $35 insulin for seniors on Medicare, and giving Medicare the ability to negotiate prescription drug prices. Uh, the president has a very strong record upon which to run. Uh, and now we need to finish the job uh, by implementing uh, the bipartisan inf infrastructure law and show the American people what right. we have done as Democrats. I think we've got a good case to make um, running in 24, not just, not just the president, but all Democrats uh, have a good case to make running in 24. Congressman, very grateful uh, for your time today. Uh, next time, let's agree to meet in Washington State, which is a far more pleasant place for us both to be talking. I am all in, Richard. I got plenty of places that we can meet. Looking forward to it, sir. Thank you.